welcome to the 12th session. And here we begin by answering the question that we raised in the previous session. Namely, if I have a continuous function, at least a region in which the function is continuous, can I construct it by using small pulse? Let me now go back to the answer. So, I have here this function which is smooth, continuous in that region which I have identified and I have this very narrow pulse spanning an interval of delta and with a height of 1 by delta. You could visualize this pulse moving along the time axis. This function is a function of t, whatever t might be, time for example. And I move that pulse to bring it to a specific location. I brought it to this location here. Let us call it t equal to t0. So, if this pulse were originally at 0 here, and if I give this pulse a name, I call it deltas, capital delta T. This is the name I give to this pulse. Then this pulse which I have drawn here can be written as delta capital delta T minus T0 shifted to lie at T0 instead of at 0. And the original function that I have here is x of T as a function of T. Now, I multiply these two and let us see what I get. Multiply them and integrate. Integrate on all time. So, what I am saying is take x t delta capital delta t minus t 0, integrate with respect to t for all t, all over the time axis what do I get? Now, here you need to do a little bit of thinking. So, visualize that you actually have this pulse lying at t 0 as it were and essentially this capital delta is small enough so that the function x t here is almost a constant on that interval. And therefore, all that happens when you multiply x t by delta delta t minus t 0 is to capture or to pick that particular value of x t. Maybe you could think of the value at the center, it does not matter. So, in other words, what I am saying formally in mathematical languages, formally x t times delta delta t minus t 0 is almost equivalent to x of t 0 delta t minus t 0. Now, you know you must appreciate what I am saying here. The two sides of the equation here, I am talking about this equation here. x t into delta t minus t 0 is equal to or is equivalent to x of t 0 times delta delta t minus t 0, the two sides of the equation have a very different meaning. Here you have a product of two functions and here you have a multiple of the pulse. So, what we are saying is in the region where the function is continuous, the product of x t with that narrow pulse is just a multiple of that narrow pulse. And now, when I integrate it with respect to all time, I simply get that factor by which it is multiplied coming out because the pulse has unit area. Now, you understand why we took unit area in the first place. So, let us say it formally, what we are saying is integral x t times delta delta t minus t 0 d t over all t is the same as integral minus infinity to plus infinity x of t 0 times delta delta t minus t 0 d t, but x of t 0 is a constant. So, it can come out of the integral. 
and therefore you have that becoming equal to x of t 0 times minus to plus infinity delta delta t minus t 0 d t and this is essentially the area in the pulse which we can conveniently make one or unity. Now, what it means is the pulse, this is one way to understand it. The pulse is like a sieve or it has a sifting property. In fact, that is what that is the term used formally, the sifting property as they call it. What does that property say? It says x of t delta delta t minus t 0 dt sifts out or pulls out x of t 0. Now, we could understand it in a slightly different way. You know, we have also written an intermediate step there. Let us write it again. We wrote down x of t delta delta t minus t 0 is equivalent to x of t 0 delta delta t minus t 0. And then we said that when we integrate x t delta delta t minus t 0 d t, we get x of t 0. Now, let us take this particular pulse that we drew. Let us assume that it is symmetric about t equal to 0, the original pulse. Let us call it delta delta t and let us note that delta delta t is equal to delta delta minus t if we assume that it is centered at 0 as we have done here. Let us use this property to write down an, a slightly modified equation. Then. The slightly modified equation is integral x t delta delta t minus t 0 d t is the same as x t delta delta t 0 minus t d t and this becomes equal to x of t 0. Now, this equation has a totally different interpretation. It is beautiful. How by twiggling the equations a little bit, we come up with new interpretations. We will see the interpretation in the next session.